what's up guys of course welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your true of course the Skyrender and today we're going up against Raymond other known as Flaming Axel on YouTube and he's a Russian pocket tuber and a very very good one at that uh, using a lot of different sets and a lot of unique ways in a lot of different tiers if you want to challenge him in a specific tier he's very very likely to be able to challenge you back and with good references so this is a channel I definitely personally actually recommend to you guys so if you haven't checked it out make sure to check down the link below and for the rest of you who know who this guy is yeah you know i mean for a ride aren't you uh looking to his team here we got luxray jumpluff hiriyama the lesser revolution of configurus just gonna name it ghost basically glaceon and it's not manaphy but it's the um Egg Pokemon off Manaphy. I'm sorry for not really remembering his name. I don't see them that often, so my bad. But definitely, he had a few Pokemon that are generally hard hitting, and, and um, I need to work myself around that. The real feeling that Luxray and Jump Club are big threats, and Glaceon is very tough if I don't have my um, Grumping around. So, as you see, I have a Grumping, Lipod, uh, Avalog, Medit and uh, Vigoroft and Vibrava and my Vibrava is actually a defensive ish set it's um, it has a high special attack a lot of speed but has a special defensive bolt to actually be able to deal with mega cameras which lately have been kind of rough on me so Vibrava is definitely like it covers it enough to work properly so I'm very glad I'm using it and with mixed results of course but it has been working lately uh, other than that, you know, as my Medit can actually do a significant amount of damage on the rest of the team, so as long as I don't lose Grumpig or Medit, I should be fine. I should be able to fit him up properly. But then again, who knows? Like I said, I am very fearful for this team, and I decided to lead off with my Grumpig, hoping that he was going to lead off with something specially oriented. So, with all this in mind, guys, let's go. So, like I said, Grumpig is my specially defensive ball, so I knew it could kind of work around whatever really comes in. He's gonna start with the mana fee, and I was just feeling throughout here that, alright, I can actually deal with this, uh, but he's physical, yeah, and that knockoff almost kills me, and uh, this is actually really bad, but I do do super tech effective damage, but don't take him out, but with my Grumpy gone, I have no way of actually dealing with special defensive damage or specially oriented damage. Which means that Glaceon is now the number one threat on my, this team. So I decided to go with my Fondronator. And I did so because I really thought I could set up curses. And um, he's actually going to go to the jump bluff here. So I really felt that I should maybe have predicted a bit. And expecting him to probably think I was going to go for an EQ. So uh, here on out I thought I was going to go for Sleep Powder. So I have Vital Spirit on um, the Vigoroth. So I decided to actually bring that one in. And um, just really try to work around it. Um, there is no reason for me to do anything else. But I obviously went for an Encore, which will not affect me. But at the same time, then just the first indication that probably I know set. Probably. So anyway, I decided to go for a return here, just doing some damage really. He's gonna show off his Veria or the Luxray. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I just had to switch out. There is no way I can take stay in. Plus, I was expecting something like in the line of a Volt Switch or a Wild Charge. So, uh, yeah, Vibrava is here, and I'm just gonna go for Boom Burst. Boom Burst is actually more powerful than her power. Uh, kind of funny like that, and I'll just do damage. Obviously, though, it is hardly enough, but uh, still, damage is damage. So, I do expect him here to go for an Ice Beam. So just gonna go to my Valibu, which is uh, a nickname on the Malibu physical life pod, and his ice beam will do a bit on that too much side, which means one thing: this thing is specs. And I knew he was gonna switch out to something that could soak fire, which was obviously the Hiroyama. So he just went on Hyper Voice, and sadly, due to him being assault vested, my Hyper Voice does not enough. And since I'm not specs, I'm actually life orb. There is no way I can do 50% of this. So, um, I'm just gonna fire off my uh, life part, really. Um, or my pyro, I mean, of course. Because, um, really, I have nothing to take on close combat properly. My defensive wall, which is the, um, both my Vigoroft and my um, Avalog, can really not take in close combat. So, I decided to come in afterwards here and just finish it off with EQ. But he lives! He lives! This is so bad! Like, 
Really, I do survive the close combos with it, which in case is actually kind of impressive. But man, man, that was not supposed to happen. The reason I went for the Q was because it has the ghost type. I felt the return was real obvious. So, yeah, I definitely messed up on this part. It's gonna bring the jump bluff. I know it's able to outspeed here, and uh, I am forced to switch out. I can't do this. But I should definitely have tried it anyway to go for. Um, I should at least try to go for. Um, what was it called? A, a slack up. Anyway, this is definitely a stall out. He decided to actually speed his thing up. I can't dent the jump bluff, and he can't really dent me due to roost. So we are in a stall out here. He's just going for infestation combination, and uh, yeah, it's basically the car line set. But finally, he will switch out. My Vibrava is not, not barely affected, of course, by this matchup, which was actually kind of funny. But at the same time, Vibrava is kind of important here, and I have to father something off, and Vigoroth well, is sadly the poke I have to father. And that really stings, to be honest, because I truly believe my Vigoroth could have done some damage here, but this is definitely like, it is not as bad as this play, because I overpredicted him to switch out his ghost type, went for Psycho Cut here, I'm Scarfed obviously, and Fuya is gonna go down! This Meditate was my winning condition, that Pokemon was the Pokemon to manage to live, and I screwed up, I really screwed up here. Uh, but anyway, I do gonna take, be able to take out this Glaceon without really no big issue here. Uh, Glaceon is definitely the monster Pokemon this game, man! How much damage that did. Obviously, Grump without Grumping, that thing is a monster. So I only have Avalog left and uh, my Vibrava. So I knew that he's probably gonna go for either Superpower or being that he's gonna go for another uh, Volt Switch or anything like that. He did decide to go for a Superpower. Sadly, it just take a bit too much damage on me. And I decided to stay in because really thinking about it, this will probably be my safer play and then just bring Avalog. And I knew that Avalog can now take a superpower after two uh, defense drops. I felt real, real comfortable staying in. Just gonna go for recover. I know he's gonna go for jump up. There is no way of me actually playing around it. But he can either go for an encore and core me to recover, or he could try to lead seed me and then we'll be able to go for an avalanche and finish it off. And that is exactly what he decides to do. He decides to go for lead seed, and uh, I'll say it's not a bad play. It is not a bad play, because that means that I will slowly die no matter what. And he got the ghost type that has very very bad HP, so he will get a lot of HP from the evil log of course. And um, basically, I knew that the ghost type was gonna come in, so I just felt that, alright, he's gonna go for a Will-O-Wisp. There's no way he's gonna play this differently. So, like I said, I am better off going for curses, trying to wall myself up, the rest of his team is only physical attackers, so um, besides the Luxray of course, um, being with the Volt Switch and whatnot. So I felt that this was probably my best bet, Curse Up getting very very thick, and basically I knew that if it had an attacking move then it would probably be the Nightshade, and I can take a Nightshade and then retaliate. So um, he's gonna go for knockoff, taking off my left doors, completely fine, as I saw that 2 HP is more than fine. But um, in combination with Lead Seed and Burn, I mean, I'll take mm, a lot of residual damage. And it actually proves here that he got Hex. And uh, with status effect, that is sadly, guys, 130 base, so he's not using Nightshade. And Hex is definitely enough here to finish me off. I went for recover this turn, and I think he did the right player and actually just finished the battle off there. So, GG Raymond. I had no power in this battle, I truly was overwhelmed. So yeah, this was actually a tough match to be honest. Um, looking back at it, I knew I overpredicted a lot this battle and my meditated overprediction was... It was very crucial because I didn't really need to do it because I still had a one more chance even if I locked myself with a high jump kick, I still would have been killed by it. But Sadly, I do too much over prediction this game, and uh, that is what kills me. Uh, Raven definitely didn't really need to play as risky as I had. I lose a lot of momentum a lot early in the game with my Grumpy being gone uh, from the knockoff, and my life were going away as fast too. 
really, really frustrated. And then we had a Vigoroth prediction where I actually went for an EQ with single per turn, which basically killed my Vigoroth. So a lot of... It, it's not a weird place, it is that the place I made made things even worse. Like, I was in a bad position from the get-go, and I just keep making it worse and worse. So I lose 3-0, but he was definitely very comfortable throughout this battle. And um, for good reasons. He had no reason of... Um, like strive from his formula here and he didn't really have a, a wally team either he had a lot of he had bulk yes but he didn't really need to have, use it because i had no pokemon that can actually be able to force him out besides avalog which sadly wasn't really proving its point until the very last part of the game which really sucked to be honest um but anyway i think my opponent played a great game and he was the worthy winner i did so many risky plays that i i couldn't win it was it is that simple sometime and hell it turned out to be a quite a fun battle anyway and um i hope you guys get to see me edited again and damn that jump bluff pink jump bluff man that that's the stuff of nightmares so anyway you know if you like this battle make sure to leave a like if you're new to the channel what's up and remember this sky's the limit guys have a good guy and take care I can speak so well today, I'm sorry. Bye. <laughs>